Hey, this is Warren Campbell, and you're checking out You Know I Got Soul.com. Hey, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Thank you for taking the time out to do the interview. We definitely appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. Oh, for sure. So, you know, first off, um, I want to talk about your appearance on the uh, new reality TV show for Mary Mary. What made you decide to, you know, participate in reality TV? Well, one, one of the things uh, that was appealing to me was the fact that I'd get to showcase and sort of brand my, my label, My Block Inc., and, and my artist, you know, Mary Mary, Joy Star, and they kind of let us, uh, they let us know uh, up front that our show would would sort of, you know, it would, it would kind of have a, a closer peek into our lives, but at the same time, they would showcase the music and how we made the music. So it was more about the music, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, which, is, which is cool. Of course, there's a lot of family stuff in there as well, which is, you know, for us, we have such a large family that it's, it's entertaining, but the, the, the constant and the, the, the hub and the center of everything is the music. Yeah. And that's, that's the best part. Yeah, definitely. And I know you were mentioning your label, My Block Inc. Can you just kind of talk to me about that? And, you know, what made you decide to start your own label? Because I know that's more work for you. Well, starting my own label was sort of kind of the plan from, 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 from the beginning. Like, when I was a little kid, I always wanted a label. I was a huge Barry Gordy and Motown fan. Yeah. And I read every autobiography, every book on Motown and all the artists. And I just always wanted to do that. Yeah. And and uh, being a producer is something that, and a, and a songwriter is something that I love and I, and I enjoy very, very much. But what I, even though I had success on, like, you know, other artists, I mean, I've worked with everybody from Kanye West to, to you know, uh, Brandy and Luther Vandross, Mario, Alicia Keys, a lot of different people. But what was different uh, was that I didn't own the product that I, was selling, you know, what I mean? it wasn't mine, I didn't, I wasn't attached to it, it was a song that I sold, and, you know, somebody else owned it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, I thought this was a perfect opportunity to, to, while I'm in the prime of my career, to, to use my talent and, and own it, and leave a legacy for my children, and, and just kind of leave something to the game, when I'm done, and, you know, when, like, Barry Gordy's done, he's retired, but we still have Motown, a lot of artists that he built, and, he, and the things that he created, Yeah. And, and I wanted to leave that same legacy, and, that, and that's, that's kind of what we're shooting for. Okay, cool. And, you know, I read that earlier on in your career, you started out with Death Row. So, how did you yeah. get that opportunity, and, you know, what kind of role did you have over there? Well, when I was at Death Row, I was very young. I was I was still in high school, okay. 16, 17 years old. And when I got there, I was a session player. Okay. Which, which means, you know, a guy would literally, it would, it would be like this. A guy would have a drum machine, and he'd have a kick and a snare drum, and I'd come and play literally everything else. I played the bass, I played the, the keyboard, I played the organ, the piano, the strings, the little mood lines, all the, all the stuff that, that made the record the record. And what I was doing was I was writing and didn't really know it. Yeah. And and so after a while, uh, after maybe a year or so of doing that, I realized what a writer was and I started just, you know, writing a lot of stuff over there. Um, some stuff that came out, some stuff that didn't, but I learned a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, and, and it came about because one of my mentors, DJ Quick, he's the guy that taught me a lot of stuff that I know about production and, and, and making beats and the whole nine. He was being managed by Suge Knight at the time, and he was producing a lot of stuff over there, so I was over there with him working and whatnot. And, we, you know, we just, things went from there, progressed. I, I, I met Suge, I met Daz, I met Tupac, and, and uh, the producer at the time, Johnny J, was, was doing a lot of Tupac stuff, so I was just kind of an integral part of all that, just playing and keys and stuff on everything. Even when they went out live and did shows, I would go out and do like, you know, Saturday Night Live with them and, you know, and, and it was it was a really, really cool time. I learned a whole lot during that time. Okay, cool. And, you know, I know you've done a lot of gospel music throughout the years and, uh, and then, you know, you just mentioned that you did some work with Death Row and you've also done a lot of R&B records. So, is the approach different when you're doing a gospel track versus, like, an R&B track? Or kind of talk to me about that. For me, you know, the, 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 and, uh, let me kind of uh, put this in perspective. Now, people tend to think because of my affiliation with Mary Mary, because that's a group that, that I founded and I do all the music, that, that I do a lot of gospel. 
gospel. I actually don't. I do some gospel. Yeah. Because Mary Mary was so popular, then other gospel artists would ask me, and I and I come from the church, so you know, of course, I have that background. But the most, the bulk of my work has been in R and B and hip hop, okay. and I do like a, a few gospel things. But the approach has always been the same. The reason why Mary Mary stands out is because when I decided to do Mary Mary at the time, I was doing. Uh, we're talking 1999. I was doing Drew Hill. Yeah. And I figured I should take the exact same approach musically as I did with Drew Hill and with even some of the Death Row stuff that I was doing. The same, like, the, the first big hit of Mary Mary, was a song, of Mary Mary was a song called Shackles. The drum sounds for that song was uh, some sounds that was given to me by DJ Quick. Okay. Some of his records on his, on his album, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I took the same approach that we used on those records. We just, you know, made the lyrics gospel. Yeah. But musically, the same thing. Okay. And I think that's why they stood out. Okay, cool. Now, um, one artist I know you've been you've worked with a lot with throughout the years is Music Soul Child. Um, you did yeah. the majority of his Love and Music album. So, can you kind of talk to me about the creative process behind that album? That that was an amazing process because music is a very uh, integral part of everything that happens. You know, you, sometimes you have an artist who kind of lets you do the track, and you bring the track in, and he'll write to it, or or you bring a track in, you get another writer, and the, the artist will just sing it. Music. He, he, his 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 creative process is amazing because he's involved with everything. So while I'm making a beat, he's there, kind of guiding, saying, "Hey, yeah, what about this sound? What about what about that sound?" Or he'll beatbox and say, "We should we should make a rhythm like this." Or you know, he's always it it helps it helps uh, kind of guide where I should go, so we never miss. And I never I'm never off the mark as it relates to what he's looking for. Yeah. Because he's right there to tell me what he's looking for, and he can articulate it perfectly because he's a very musical person. Yeah. Uh, he knows chords, he knows sounds, he knows all that stuff. So that makes the process that much easier for a producer because, you know, we know, I know exactly what he wants. Yeah. And I can make whatever's coming out of whatever whatever's in his mind, I can make that come out of the speakers. Yeah. Because he's there to help me do it. So he's, he's an amazing person, like, and like amazing musician. Because uh, I don't consider him just a singer. He's a, he's a, he's a musician. Okay. And then um, you also worked on his following album, On My Radio. And, you know, can you kind of talk to me about, you know, the sound of that album? And, you know, if there was any intention to try something new on it? There was definitely an intention to try something new. M- music is, while he's known for being uh, a soul man, uh, a soul guy, you know, he is a very huge, like, early hip-hop fan. Yeah like 80s hip hop and all that kind of stuff so he, he wanted to try some of those things and incorporate that into you know what we were doing which I thought was cool you know he, he came in with these you know ideas about using beatbox and you know and you could tell even in his first hit you know the intro to uh, uh, his first hit had a beatbox intro on it he just you know that's his that's his era that's what he loves so we were just trying to kind of accommodate his, his ideas that he had and I think I think it turned out great. I mean, we had a great time artistically. Um, I I don't know what it did commercially because I I generally don't keep up with that kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, as far as us having a great time in the studio and creating things that we loved and things that we liked, we we accomplished that. Yeah. And uh, it was a great it was a great time. Okay. Cool. Now um, I want to ask you about a song that you did back in the day. Um, this is actually my favorite Brandy song. It's "He Is." Can you kind of talk? Oh wow! Can you kind of talk to me about how that song was created? That song was created uh, through so uh, there was a chord progression that I had been playing on the piano um, probably since I was fourteen years old. The, the chord progression that 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 the song uses. It's something that I made up in, in, in school. I was in the ninth grade, and I was in the piano room playing, and I made this little tune-up. And I always played it from time to time. And so fast forward to, you know, whenever we wrote the song, uh, I was in the studio, and just, I said, you know what, I never used these chords before, and I kind of put them together, had a little beat going, and I put them down, and I, and this, and I recorded them, and it sounded really cool. So I started adding more layers on top of it. I added a rose, I added a bass, and that, you know, after a while, I said, man, this sounds amazing, really amazing. I was, I remember being at the record plant studios in L.A., 
And for some reason, I had a lot of, um, that day, I had a lot of artists coming through the studio just either to meet with me or hanging out or whatever. I remember Alicia came through the studio, and she heard the track and said, oh, I love that. What is that? It wasn't finished yet, so I just said, oh, I just something I'm just fooling around with. Then Deborah Cox came. When De- By the time Deborah got there, the, the track was finished, and I almost gave it to her because she wanted it. She was, she was like, man, I love that. I, I want that. And I said, well, you know, let me, let me, you know, listen to it a little more, and then I'll, I'll get back to you and all that. But then when Brandy got there, she loved it so much, she said, let's write it now, let's sing it right now. And that's how we, we came up with that. Me and my, my writing partner, Harold Lilly, uh, we sat there and wrote the song. She sung it that night, and that's how that's, that's what happened. But it almost didn't make it to Brandy. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you talk about your experience working with Brandy? Because I know you did some other songs with her. Yeah, I mean, Brandy is one of my first jobs. Um, I was I was in Brandy's band when I when I after I finished working with Death Row Records and, and Brandy came out. Well, actually, in the middle in the middle of working with Death Row Records, Brandy did a tour. And I went on tour with her as a keyboard player in her band. And we did, you know, a couple of years on her first album. I, I was with her. And, you know, we just became really, really good friends. And in the meantime, you know, I, I started developing as a songwriter and a producer. And I missed, I just missed doing the Never Say Never album. I was still kind of in the development phase at that point. And I was very young. Yeah. I, re- I really wanted to be on that album. And so what I did was, since I wasn't on the album, I quit her band. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know, it was, it was, I felt like as a songwriter, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm sort of supporting an album that I'm not even on as a songwriter, and I really want to be a songwriter. Yeah. I don't want to be out here playing and being in bands the rest of my career. I want to do this other thing. So I quit the band. She wasn't at the rehearsal when I quit. Okay. So I happened to be at home, you know, at the time I still lived at home with my parents. And I saw her car pulls up, and she jumps out and says, hey, why'd you quit? And I told her, I said, hey, Brandy, I'm, I'm a songwriter now. Like, I can't just be on the road and, you know, going everywhere with you. And I don't even have a song on this album. I just don't feel right doing it. But, we, you know, we remained friends, and then she made sure that I was on the next album, which oh. he is. And then the album following that, uh, we did a song called Who I Am, which, which was the first song on that album. Um, you know, and we've always been very, very close she was in my wedding you know so you know that that was it was just a, a great friendship and still is oh that's very cool and then um i want to ask you about another song that you did it's mario's braid my hair can you talk to me about that one yeah braid my hair is a funny story because at the time mario was i want to say he was 15 or yeah. 16 and i guess we were in new york working at quad studios out there and they went to pick Mario up from school oh. <laughs> to come to the studio. Yeah. And right, I guess nobody told him he was coming to the studio. He was getting ready to get his hair braided. Yeah. But they picked him up too soon. And he wasn't, it was some, some girl at the school that was supposed to braid his hair. And so when he got to the studio, his hair was sticking up and it was all over the place. And I, I had just got uh, finished with the track. I finished the entire track and just kind of sitting there to me and Harold was trying to figure out what to write. And Harold, actually, no, this was before Harold got to the studio. I was there by myself. Mario walks in, and I said, simply, I said, hey, Mario, why is your hair all sticking up like that? So he tells me this story about he didn't know he was coming to the studio that day, and there was a girl that was supposed to braid his hair after school, and he was talking about how she looked and how pretty she was and the whole nine. And he made the, he made the story, he made getting his hair braided sound almost like a sexual experience. <laughs> it was so huge to him in his eyes. He was like, oh, my God. Man, she sits me between her legs and she braids my hair. Oh, man, she's, uh, you know, this whole thing he went into. And so right about that time, Harold Lilly walked into the room. I said, now tell Harold that story again. And so Harold heard the story. He said, man, give me five minutes. <laughs> we, we stepped out the room five minutes. He wrote the chorus. And in the, when Harold wrote a chorus that he thought was great, he had a kind of a thing he did. Which <laughs> it's funny. He was like, he knew that he had a hit record, and he got excited. He would throw things around the studio. Oh wow! <laughs> so we're standing outside the door. Me and Mario actually, we were in the hallway, like wrestling or something. I don't remember. And all I heard was like a bunch of crash, boom, crash, boom, crash. And Harold had kicked the chairs over. He'd open up the water bottles and. 
scored them all over his head. He was just going crazy. He's like, I got a hit record. It's called Braid My Hair, you know, and he sung me the chorus. And then we continued on and started finishing the rest of the song. And then I wrote the bridge and the breakdowns and stuff. And, you know, and, that, and the rest is history. But it all came from, you know, an actual occurrence where Mark Braille needed his hair braided. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I read that you're also working on your own album. Can you kind of talk to me about that? Yeah, my, my album is, is, is going to be my, it's my baby. It's my, it's my, my fun album, you know, where I get to do all the music that I want and I'm not constrained by an, an other artist saying, okay, I want this, I want that. This is finally like an album where I'm doing things that I want. Sort of in the vein of, the old Quincy Jones albums, like Back on the Block, Hughes Juke Joint, or The Dude, where, you know, it's really music, and he has special guest friends of his that come and sing on the album. You know, I'm going to have, right now I have Mario, and, and I have uh, uh, Music Soul Child, A. Marie, and I have songs, you know, other artists that, that, that I'm doing. And it's basically my music and different styles that I, that I like to, to, uh, experiment with because I, I do pretty much all the genres so I got some stuff that sounds very soulful some, a couple of popular things some jazz stuff some, some real you know vintage rock classic rock sound and stuff that I, I mean that's that's one of the areas that I love music I love you know old Rolling Stone sounding records and um, and just the overall just you know it's like a it's like I'm having my own block party you know what I mean and I got my friends coming to help me and sing I, I'm, I'm not rapping or singing on it myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just doing all the music. It's, it's, a, it's a, a really musical album. Oh, okay. And we're going to have a lot of fun on there. Okay. You know, what made you decide to, you know, put out that album? You know, really, I was in a studio and I had all this music that I knew that commercially, maybe it wouldn't fit on uh, one specific artist. You know, I couldn't sell this stuff to Alicia or Beyonce. It was just music that I that I did, that I created just because I wanted to. Yep. It was just in, it was in me, so I wanted to get it out. So I said, you know what, this is probably for me. This is something I should do myself. And, you know, and, 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 and really, at the end of the day, every artist has some stuff that he has to get out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And especially when in my, in my line of work, I'm usually writing or producing for other people all the time. So I said, let me do something. That's mine. That, that that I can say that I that I want to do because I'm like I'm like Burger King most of the time. I let people have it their way. You yep. know what I mean? Like <laughs> I, I go, hey, you want to you want it like this? I give it to you like this. This time I'm giving it to you how I want it. Yeah. So you know that's that's what that's what the whole thing is behind that. Okay, cool. And you know that's all that I had for you. Is there anything that you'd like to add? Hey, everybody! I just want everybody to go support my block Inc. and the new artists we have. We have Joy Star coming. J O I S. A R R, and she's going to be the next big thing that I'm going to be putting my stamp behind and putting a lot of my effort into. So I want everybody to go ahead and support that. 